Okay, so what we're going to learn here in this video is how to create an array. Now, an array is, is a variable, but it doesn't just hold one value. It can actually hold a container of values, such as, you know, 10, 100, or even a thousand different items. And so, the way that you, um, you use arrays is ActionScript 3 has an array object for us to use. Um, it's already defined. And it's a you can find it inside of Adobe Docs just by searching for array, uh, and it has a lot of different properties and methods that are already built in. So you can get the length just by accessing this property here, the dot length value, um, and that will actually tell you. It'll give you a non-negative integer specifying the number of the elements in the array. Uh, in order to actually add items to the array, they have a push. Uh, function that adds one or more ele elements to the end of an array and it also returns the new length of the array so if you wanted to actually get that value after using the function you can do that now the pop removes the last element from an array and returns the value of that element okay so push and pop are very common uh, when it, when dealing with arrays you'll want to you'll want to read up on that and um, just have a look at it there's another option called slice, another function, and this is for slicing um, a certain element off the array uh, without modifying the original array. So you might want to look at some of these functions here. But getting back to Flash Develop, I'm going to create a new variable. We're going to make it as public, and we'll just call it, we're going to use the keyword var because we're creating a new variable. Um, the variable is going to be called my array, and you put a colon. Now we're going to use uh, the built-in array class, so we can actually type that as an array and then put a semicolon. Now all that did so far was um, specify that we have a variable called my array that is going to hold an array. In order to actually use the array, there's three different ways to initialize the array. You can either use my array equals new array and what that will do is it will just specify that you would like a completely new array with no items in it and we can actually trace the length of the array by saying my array dot length and you're probably going to get a zero here yeah so here we have zero items in the array uh, one way to initialize an array with items is to actually add the items where I'm going to add a bunch of strings so I'm going to go item zero item one uh, arrays are zero index based, which means the first item is always a zero. So I'm, this is two items in the array so far. Let me compile again. Yeah, so it shows here that there's two items inside of that array. Now, if you want to access one of the items, you can. I'm going to do another trace statement here, and I'm going to specify my array. And this is where that code hinting comes in handily. Handy. If you just type my, you see how that pops up, and then when you press enter. Um, it auto-completes that for you. Now if you put a period, you're going to see all of the properties and methods that are available on the array. We're going to actually um, we're going to actually specify the first item by putting a by erasing that dot and putting a curly brace there and we'll put a zero and then a closing curly brace and then we'll close the trace method so that when we when I compile my program you should see that we have testing, which is up here. Then we have the count of the array, which was traced. And then now we're accessing the first item of the array. So you guessed it, if you really wanted to access the second item of the array, you can actually just put a 1 there. And that will actually show you item 1 in the array. There are The other two ways that you can initialize an array are a little bit different. Um, or actually, there's only one other way. Uh, so it's my array equals and you put a square bracket and then you can put items into the array like this item item number one and you put item number two and so you can actually <clears throat> close that and so if we run the program again you'll see that item number one is the first item which is a zero and item number two is the second item 
And so it's a little bit confusing, but once you start working with arrays long enough, um, you'll actually get used to working with them and it'll become very handy uh, when you're using arrays. And you'll also want to remember to bookmark this page here so you can get some of the built-in functionality of arrays and start beginning to use them. Just have a read through and you'll be able to see and use your imagination what you want to use um, from the array class or the array object.